about is human factors engineering strategies so as you know uh, healthcare is not an error free industry errors happen all the time in fact uh, uh, several deaths that happen in healthcare are attributed to errors in in patient safety and uh, uh, human beings are involved in providing healthcare and human beings you know uh, human beings uh, can make mistakes mistakes can happen human beings get tired they uh, they can be fatigued they have several things going on in their life and all of these uh, can lead to errors in addition if two human beings are doing the same kind of work there will still be variation in the kind of work they do so uh, how do you account for these variations in human factors the the best thing to do is to create a system that addresses all these different human factors so that is the human factors engineering uh, model so what do you do you avoid reliance on memory one of the biggest problems in healthcare is that uh, healthcare providers sometimes forget things so for example uh, errors in medications happen because uh, of uh, of you know of people forgetting uh, what they're supposed to write or that they were supposed to provide a sort of care or that they have to go and see a patient in time etc so avoid reliance on memory build systems that will help you bypass the reliance on memory so in effect there can be some automatic uh, reminder systems etc second one use constraints of forcing functions so forcing functions is where they, they, i mean you know there would be no a chance for you to make a mistake so one of the biggest examples i can think of is if you go to the intensive care unit you have vents for uh, vacuum and you have vents for oxygen now the way the vents are designed and color coded you cannot fit a vacuum vent into an oxygen vent and you cannot and vice versa so this is a forcing function so in effect it forces you you, you know the 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 vacuum vent has to be used for vacuum and the oxygen vent has to be used for oxygen so those are forcing function which force is you into the right behavior the third one is to use protocols and checklists to generate standard care now checklists are a huge help uh, they come from the aviation industry they have been found to be very effective in the aviation industry and they have been successfully adopted in surgery and in anesthesia so uh, you create a standard care and you follow the uh, the checklist every single time so that again you are not relying on memory and you're not uh, you're not uh, relying overly on people's judgment so the checklist make sure that the standard care is always consistently followed F uh, fourth strategy is to decrease look alikes and sound alikes if you've worked in healthcare you probably already know this if there are two medications which are both high risk medications and if if the uh, you know the the uh, they have a huge uh, chance for toxicity etc you do not want both the vials of medications uh, to look the same and you do not want them to be placed next to each other and this is again a huge uh, source of error so you want to decrease uh, medications that look the same you have to probably follow some sort of color coding etc to make sure that they do not look the same and also sound alikes should be avoided so that is where Uh, generally healthcare professionals are uh, encouraged to use the uh, the 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 names the generic names of the medications as opposed to the trade names because it is easy for people to understand uh, the the generic the chemical names of medications you reduce the number of handoffs so what what does a handoff mean any time work uh, in healthcare uh, is passed on from one discipline to the other or from one department to the other uh, or from one floor to the other it's called a handoff so for example if a physician hands off a piece uh, a patient or a piece of uh, of uh, clinical work to the nurse it's a handoff if a patient gets transferred from the medical icu to the medical floor that's a handoff and what has been found is that the uh, handoffs create the largest opportunity for errors in healthcare okay so if you can create a process if you can design a process that reduces the number of handoffs you will uh, definitely reduce uh, the number of errors that happen the next point is to automate carefully so you know we we always think that we want to you know get rid of the human factors and so automation and computers are going to help us to do that but there is a problem with that and one one of the biggest examples i can give you is the alert fatigue so if you work on electronic medical records uh, sometimes when you enter some medications etc uh, alerts will pop up on your computer screen now these alerts are good the first time around when you see those alerts 
you will see it and you will take some action you know you will remember to do something but what happens is over a period of time when you've been using this over and over again day in and day out you develop a fatigue to it so in effect you you really do not you become blind to those alerts so you do not want to create a system where this sort of alert fatigue develops and people start bypassing those uh, uh, those automation uh, strategies that you have used so you have to think about now there are no silver bullets to this but when you develop your systems when you go for automation you should always automate carefully keeping all these factors in mind and the last one is to take advantage of habits and patterns you know human beings are creatures of habits uh, we we follow certain patterns and certain habits when we do our works uh, do do our work every day and uh, uh, you know we have to we have to take all these things into consideration so one of the examples that i can think of is uh, you know how shifts uh, in um, in uh, medical care you know on on um, uh, how shifts are designed uh, so you have to take into account the fact that you know people are probably uh, you know they they are more fatigued at night or they have to work certain uh, number of hours in a week etc so you have to you have to think through these habits and these patterns that people work with etc and you have to design your systems accordingly now the other thing that you need uh, an another example of habits and patterns is if if uh, if a nurse working on a particular medical floor uh, has a certain way if nurses on a medical floor have a certain way of carrying about their work carrying on their work uh, and you know it's an established pattern whenever you build some robust uh, safety systems in you want to design your safety systems in the path of the already existing pattern so that you know you you do you are not forcing the nurses to disrupt their old patterns and you know create a completely new system because then there'll be a huge learning curve involved there so you have to take advantage of habits and patterns